So previously, when we were looking at the conservation of mechanical energy, we were looking at the initial energy being equal to the final energy. Okay, so this is your conservation of mechanical energy. And that's only going to be the case if you've got uh, the work done uh, on the weight. Okay, so um, the uh, force due to gravity. So, if that's not the case, if you have a force that is pulling an object along, um, as we saw in the previous video, um, or if you've got frictional forces, then there will be work done by those forces. They will either be adding energy into the system or taking energy away. Okay, so we must have plus or minus the work done by those forces. Okay, so the initial energy is the initial gravitational potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy. And then we're going to have plus or minus the work done. Okay, and that might be plus uh, the work done by um, the force pulling the object along. Take away the work done by the friction. Okay, so this is essentially a sum of the work done by the different forces that are affecting the object. And that's going to be equal to the final gravitational potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. And this is your work energy principle. Okay? So, this is the form that we will be using to solve um, the majority of the energy problems that we deal with on this course. Okay? Um, and it's a really good way of laying out your work, particularly for those of you who don't do A-level physics, um, because it makes sure that you don't forget any of the elements. So you know that, okay, I've got, has the, uh, what's the initial gravitational potential energy? What is the final gravitational potential energy? I need to take those into account. Okay? So if you lay it out that way, then it makes sure that you don't miss anything out. Okay, so I well recommend this, and I'll show you how to use it um, in the next video where we go back to the previous example.